everyone welcome to lead squad's uh, webinar today today's uh, webinar is on the topic what and why of google plus for business and neelu joshi and the senior marketer here at lead squad and i will be conducting the webinar today right so uh, why exactly have we taken up this topic why google plus uh, i'm pretty sure that uh, all of you've been uh, hearing how google plus is gaining importance uh, uh, lately for businesses it's been around for quite some time but uh, only uh, in a in in the past 5 uh, 6 months we've been hearing how important it is and it's going to be for businesses going forward right so uh, also uh, with the uh, new update new um, google's uh, algorithm update hummingbird uh, people have been uh, talking a lot about uh, how google plus could also impact seo right so that is why we are conducting the webinar on the topic google plus for business so uh, let me directly come to the agenda today that is uh, what is it that you that you learn from the webinar today so you learn why uh, would it help you to be on google plus at all even though people hate it even though users uh, are not really uh, you know uh, very users are reluctant to use it right so uh, we would also discuss how it would benefit uh, you to have a google plus business page as well as individual google plus profiles for uh, uh, your uh, uh, for your individuals for your uh, uh, employees whoever is uh, taking care of your social presence that is then uh, we'll discuss a little bit about uh, google plus and its impact on seo then we'll talk about how google plus um, um is important um, or how google plus is uh, related to ads on google which means google adwords and then we'll uh, talk about a few best practices of uh, being on google plus of engaging with people on google plus right so uh, this is the agenda for the webinar so let's come straight to the first part uh, which is why be on google plus at all even though people are reluctant to use it so uh let me start off by saying that uh, google plus has seen a lot of uh, growth uh, in the past year despite user reluctance to use it now it may be due to the fact that uh, google is um, integrating all of its different services like the latest one being uh, uh, if you want to comment on uh, youtube then you have to have a google plus profile or a different username is created for you right so stuff like this is uh, definitely uh, getting users uh, on board on uh, google plus even though uh, many of them have been very reluctant in doing so right so uh, here are some stats to support this fact so google plus has seen 58% jump in users from may 2013 to uh, in uh, to october 2013 so this particular data is from october 2013 uh, september beginning almost so uh, this is some pretty impressive data here so uh, in may 190 million monthly active users were recorded for google plus and in october 300 million were recorded and these are active users not the dormant ones active users mean people who are actually uh, actively engaging um, with the others in the community or posting uh, uh, online like how they are how users are active on facebook So another thing uh, is that by May 2013, Google Plus had already outpaced Twitter to become the second largest social network in the world. So here's the data for October. Uh, as you can see that uh, uh, here, uh, uh, Facebook uh, has almost uh, one uh, billion active users, and Google Plus only is only next to it with 300 million active users, and it has uh, uh, it has outpaced Twitter. Uh, that has 230 million active users um, in May 2013. Right? So, uh, right. So that means that it's growing really, really fast despite users' uh, uh, reluctance. So another uh, data uh, that I'm going to show you here is from a June analysis by uh, Search Metrics. They compared the percentage growth of uh, shares on Facebook versus the plus ones on Google. So, as you can see, the growth on Google Plus is pretty high, seven hundred and eighty-eight percent. 
compared to 202 percent on Facebook. Now, if you notice only the numbers, then of course Facebook uh, has a much larger user database, which is um, uh, because of which the numbers here uh, are much higher than this this particular thing, right? It's only two billion shares here, whereas uh, here it's uh, much over 29 billion shares. So, in pure numbers, Facebook is much ahead. But growth is looking really, really promising for Publicus, right? So, if um, um, if the growth rate remains the same, Google Plus uh, is um, is you know projected to surpass Facebook in shares by February 2016. So, uh, this is um, according to that same analysis by Search Metrics. So, this once again is uh, pretty impressive, right? So, that's why. Uh, you should be on Google Plus because slowly and reluctantly, or in whatever way, slowly users are coming around, right? So people are coming on Google Plus. So here's uh, another piece of data, right? So this actually I've already uh, uh, said before. So Google is already second next only to Facebook in global penetration. See where it is. So. So these uh, these were the reasons pertaining to uh, the actual use of Google Plus by users, right? So uh, because people are on, are coming on Google Plus now, that's why you should be on Google Plus as well as this. Is. So it's also supposed to work wonders for SEO. Uh, let me show you a correlation graph, uh, which is by Search Metrics. So uh, there are a number of factors here that supposedly. Uh, are uh, correlated with higher search rankings on Google, but Google Plus ones are right there on top. So when I talk about uh, correlation, it does not uh, necessarily uh, mean that Google uses these particular factors uh, in its algorithm, right? Uh, this particular analysis just just tells us what are the factors on an average that were present in higher search results, which were not present in the lower search results. So, so uh, the relationship might not be positive, but uh, it's there, right? So that's why that is something to consider. So uh, as you can see, uh, that said, as you can see, Google Plus ones are right there on the top. So that's why uh, you have to make sure that uh, you are on Google Plus, you are actively there, and your content is being shared. Now, as I've said before, uh, another analysis was uh, published uh, by Moss in addition to search metrics analysis. And uh, in response to that, uh, Matt Cutts from Google denied a causative relationship between search rankings and Google Plus ones. But uh, as I've said before, even though uh, the relationship is not positive, uh, may not be causative, but uh, it's there. So uh, that is something to consider. So with that, let's come to the second uh, part of the webinar today. Why have a Google Plus business page? So uh, I have emphasized a lot on uh, the publisher market before. Uh, I'll talk about that again because that is one of the very important reasons uh, why businesses should have Google Plus accounts, right? They have to uh, establish themselves as publishers uh, verified by Google, right? So uh, it, it actually helps uh, uh, improve the visibility of uh, businesses in uh, search results as well as it gives more credibility to businesses as good content creators, right? So let's just take a look at this. So what are the visible benefits of pub the publisher market? In uh, plus, um, the plus channel appears in search rankings if you look for a business in uh, Google, right? So see, this is how it appears. For those of you who have, uh, who um, everybody does a lot of search on Google, so I'm sure that um, we have seen the knowledge graph that appears here, right? Uh, for the I think for the past um, uh, an year or so, a uh, year or so, the knowledge graph has been appearing. So this is something similar, but it's for businesses, right? Knowledge graph is more uh, knowledge related, right? So this is for businesses, uh, but this is appearing, right? So this looks pretty attractive, right? This looks pretty attractive and uh, it also allows uh, people to circle you right from here. They can actually click on this and go to your uh, channel, right? Go to your Google Plus channel or they can follow you from right here. So uh, this is one advantage that uh, 
publisher markup gives you. Another thing is uh, better credibility in uh, Gmail inboxes. So I'll take an example of uh, the email that you guys uh, would have received uh, for uh, the webinar for today's webinar, right? So uh, this is uh, this is uh, an email in my Gmail inbox. That it's the same email. As you can see, that lead squad's logo along with uh, um, some information pulled from uh, lead squad's Google Plus page is displayed right here above the apps, right? So. Uh, it not only gives your email more uh, credibility, it uh, might uh, it might act as an uh, additional CTA. People can start following you from here, right? So uh, this once again is a visible benefit of uh, having a publisher markup on Google on your website. Of Google, Google publisher markup on your website, right? So another uh, reason uh, other than publisher markup, why? for you to have a Google Plus uh, business page is that uh, sharing and contributing on Google Plus network indirectly uh, impacts search rankings, especially if your users are logged into their Google accounts, right? It uh, really, really impacts uh, rankings uh, when people are used into their own Google accounts. So uh, the first thing, uh, which uh, is a very general thing, is that you should be present on all social networks, right? You are there on Facebook, you're there on Twitter, you're there on LinkedIn, why not on Google Plus also? So your business page will be your face on Google Plus. That is one thing. The next thing, which uh, relates to our uh, thing, our topic here, if you share something on Google Plus page, the link is a do follow link. In contrast to other micro blogging sites like Twitter, where links are no follow. So uh, for those of you who are aware of uh, SEO uh, a little bit, you would know that do follow links are very important, right? as compared to no follow links. Do follow links uh, pass link authority uh, to your website, right? So uh, they are very, very important ones. I'll um, actually discuss uh, this thing a little more in detail uh, later on during the webinar, right? So right now, uh, all you should remember is that uh, the links on Google Plus are do follow and uh, do follow links give you um, SEO benefits, right? They give you link authority. So uh, another thing is that if you share something on Google Plus, Google indexes it almost immediately. So it's obvious, right? Google Plus is uh, Google's uh, is Google's, right? So uh, this is in contrast to Twitter or Facebook uh, that generally restrict Google's crawling activities. So as soon as you publish a new blog post and you share it on all the different uh, social accounts that you have then the Google Plus would be getting uh, indexed in the al almost immediately. So that's why whenever you post something new, make sure that you post it on Google Plus as well, that you do update your Google Plus uh, page, business page, right? So you'll get this uh, early crawling benefit also. Then uh, Google Plus's hashtags, means the hashtags that are being shared on Google Plus are searchable in Google. So which means if you have a Google Plus business page and if you are uh, sharing uh, regularly, you are engaging really regularly on Google Plus and people are sharing your uh, content, then these hashtags that uh, uh, actually what Google does is uh, Google creates hashtags uh, uh, on its own for your particular post depending on what is the content that you are sharing or so the content that you are sharing, right? So uh, those particular hashtags are searchable on Google. So this you get this search benefit as well. Now, uh, now that we know what uh, are the benefits of um, uh, being on uh, Google Plus, having a Google Plus page, let's discuss how to set up a publisher markup on normal websites. So you have to add this line of code to the header section of your website, right? So um, you can actually take this link from right here and. Uh, paste it on your website because we'll be sending you this uh, PPT, right, along with the uh, recording of the webinar. I will actually also show you how you can get it from your uh, Google Plus business page, this particular uh, line that you have to paste in the header section of your website. So uh, I'll, I'll show you that in the next next step. So uh, the, the second thing to do would be to get a reciprocal link from Google Plus website. So uh, this I'll uh, show you how to get. Now 
this was for a normal website. However, if you are on WordPress, the uh, thing, uh, the steps become more simple, right? So uh, there are two ways to do it, and you should do both. One is through Yoast SEO. I have uh, spoken about this particular plugin, Yoast SEO, before. It gives you a number of SEO benefits, and um, in addition, it helps you in this uh, in some of these social activities also, like uh, establishing your publishing account. So this is how it helps. Uh, if you are logged into your uh, WordPress um, uh, WordPress dashboard, then and you have your uh, Yoast WordPress SEO plugin installed, then you would see um, SEO section uh, there on the uh, left sidebar sidebar where all the different uh, uh, things are on uh, on your WordPress dashboard, right? So if you click on that, uh, then you reach this particular section. You you have to click on Home, right? You have to take the URL of your Google Plus business page. You have to paste it here, right? And you just have to save settings, and you would be done, right? Your uh, uh, publisher marker would be established. And uh, once again, uh, as I've told before, you can get a reciprocal link from your uh, uh, Google Plus uh, uh, page, your Google Plus business page, to the website. Now the second option is by putting a Google Publisher badge through your website. So it has uh, multiple benefits. Uh, not only does it uh, um, help you establish your publisher mark on your website, it also uh, puts a nice looking badge, Google Plus badge on your website, uh, uh, which allows people to circle you from your website itself, right? To add you to their Google Plus circles to the website itself. So I'll, I'll show you how this is done online. So let's just do this. Yeah. So this is the link where you would want to go, right? Developers.google.com slash plus slash web slash batch. Let's load. It's taking a little bit of time. So right. Uh, this is where you land. This is where you are allowed to, uh, you know, have uh, uh, choose which particular profile you want. If I choose other here, because actually I want it for my uh, Lead Squad page, right? For my Lead Squad uh, business page. So what I'll do is I'm already logged into uh, Google Plus here. So I'll go to my Lead Squad uh, page. I'll take the URL. I'll paste it here. Right. See, Google pulls the information through uh, from my Google page, and it uh, gives me the code that I need to copy and embed on my website wherever I want it to render. So, what I'll do is I'll just copy this. All right. So, uh, I'll tell you guys how to paste this particular uh, widget, this particular uh, badge on your uh, WordPress website. For those of you who are not on WordPress, who are on uh, uh, some um, other other websites, you can uh, have your webmasters paste this, right? Wherever you want a particular widget to render. So what I'll do is, I'm already logged into my uh, WordPress account. So uh, I'll go to, I'll hover over appearances. I'll click on widgets. Also, in addition, what it allows you to do, do is this. 
um, a person, a, a user, a searcher lands on your website, right, he sees this particular widget, it's pretty attractive, then if he wants, he can circle you from right here, right? So uh, that would really help. So that is how um, Badge helps you additionally. So I hope uh, it's understood how uh, Google Plus Badge works. Google Plus Badge uh, can be embedded on your website. Right. So now let's come to uh, a very important part, which is how to create a business Google Plus page if you haven't already done it yet. So this is where you're supposed to go, this particular URL, right? Slash plus slash business, right? So you would land on something like this, a page like this. You have to click on get your page. Alternatively, when you're logged and see, as you can see, I'm logged in as myself here. So log in as yourself, click on home, you would see all of these options drop down, click on pages, right? And then uh, you would get the next step, which is to add, add a page, something like this, similar to this. Not exactly this, but similar to this. You'd have this get your page button there. So right, so next come, let's come to the second uh, step. After having uh, uh, clicked on the button to um, create a page, you will be given uh, these five options by Google depending on what exactly is uh, the is your business type you have to make the choice right so one thing you have to remember is that if your business is local and if you want uh, your business to appear in local search listings uh, like uh, you know on the maps and all then you have to select this local business or page or uh, place right so uh, because once you select the type of your page you cannot go back and change the type of your so you have to make this choice uh, in the beginning itself. So uh, now uh, for this particular example for creating a page, I will take the example of product or brand, right? So I'll take this example. So if you click on that, you'll be asked to select a category that your business belongs to, right? I can select any category from the drop down and then I have to click on next. So uh, then I would be asked to uh, choose a name for my business. I, I can uh, link list my external website. So uh, this is uh, where your uh, reciprocal link from here to your uh, uh, website uh, is there, right? You know, for to complete your publisher markup setup. This is where your uh, uh, website link you, you have to put it, right? So, right, you, so you do this, then uh, you choose um, if your content is uh, appropriate one. Most, in most cases, you would uh, choose this particular option, but there by default and then you have to click on I agree to page terms and uh, I'm authorized to create this page and click on continue that's it uh, you are done all that you have to do now is complete your Google Plus page by, uh, by providing different kinds of information like you have to add a profile picture you have to add a cover photo then uh, you have to add all the different kinds of uh, contact information which means your phone number your address your uh, uh, other business options, right? The, all of that. And then now uh, you have to add your website if you haven't done it yet. If you did it in the earlier step, then you don't have to do it again. But uh, if you didn't do it before, then you can do it from right here. Right, so there are different kinds of personalization options. Let me take a look at them, actually. So right, this is my Google Plus page, right? So you have to make sure that your profile is complete with all the story, your tagline, your introduction, uh, the different links to your different kinds of social profiles, your contact information, everything should be there on the page, right? Otherwise your page will not be complete. So uh, another uh, very important thing is uh, to link your website, right? As I have uh, said before, that will be the second step that would uh, actually uh, help you establish the publisher market.
going to link the website. So after you click on link website, then uh, you would be given this particular code that you have to paste on your website to establish the permission number, right? So um, you can actually, as it has it is uh, said here, you can email these instructions to your webmaster. So uh, if you are not on WordPress, if it's a little difficult for you to establish the publishing mark of your site, you can just email the instructions to your webmaster. And a nice uh, uh, the email goes uh, from Google to your webmaster, right? So that's it. Right? So uh, another very important step is uh, email verification. Uh, this will come under uh, the option when you uh, get your, when you give your all your contact information, when you uh, feed in all your contact information into your Google Plus Business page. So what you have to do is um, uh, you have to put your uh, email ID here. You have to uh, uh, you have to put your email ID here, and you have to verify it. Google will send you a verification link, and you have to click on that. As soon as you do that, your uh, business email would be verified by Google. Right, so uh, that's it. That's how you create uh, a page, uh, a business page on Google. And um, uh, actually, uh, the procedure for uh, creating a Google Plus uh, local page is uh, different from what I've listed right now. So uh, we are actually creating a post on that. So uh, we'll we'll send you a post for that uh, uh, when we send you the PPT for this uh, particular uh, webinar. Right, so. Alright, I hope you have understood now why it is important to have a Google Plus business page for yourself, for your business. Now, uh, let's come to the third very important part, which is why I have a Google Plus profile for the individual who is, uh, for the individual or for the individuals who are managing your business, who are managing your business's presence uh, online, social media presence, right? So, the first uh, uh, thing is that you have to admin the Google Plus page you just created. Uh, you have to have a Google Plus uh, individual profile, person's profile, right? Then uh, you have to uh, have your all your authors uh, of your uh, blogs establish their authorship. And uh, uh, actually creating a Google Plus profile is a very basic thing. You don't really have to worry about that because if you have a Google uh, your Gmail ID, then Google has already created a Google uh, plus profile for you all that you have to do is you have to fill out all the information there uh, like how we did in case of business all the in individuals information should also be there and it should be linked to your website right so uh, that is what you have to make sure otherwise the profile gets created automatically by Google so all right uh, now uh, let's come to authorship markup and why is it important now, um, like publisher markup, I have been talking a lot about authorship markup uh, in the previous webinars also, and I'm sure you've been hearing a lot about authorship markup, especially if you are a business uh, who uh, relies uh, on a lot of uh, content creation, which means a lot of blogging activities, etc. And um, uh, if you um, actually want to uh, reap the benefits of organic SEO, then you should be blogging. And uh, then that's why uh, the authorship will be very important for you. So uh, why is authorship important? First thing is that it gives credibility to your authors, right? So authorship uh, is how authors claim ownership of their content. And authors are very, very important in Google's book now. Google uh, ranks content based on uh, how good the authors are, right? So uh, that's why it's important. Um, of course, it will also help prevent uh, content uh, plagiarism, right? Uh, then uh, the CTR of the post with authorship establishes higher, and higher CTR is a positive ranking signal. I'll, I'll tell you why the CTR is higher here, right? So I look up uh, something like Facebook landing pages here, and all of these posts appear. So uh, this is the post that has the authorship uh, markup established here, right? This is my post that has authorship markup established. So don't you think it looks more attractive than uh, these uh, these uh, particular uh, search uh, search uh, results where uh, the uh, rich snippets, which means the pho photograph, etc., are not there? So this certainly looks more clickable, and uh, there will be more probability that uh, people will click on it and read it if they find value in the content. 
so i tell you why uh, ctr is important a high ctr on organic uh, uh, rankings uh, on organic um, search rankings are important uh, see for those of you who are uh, running ads on google you would know that uh, google gives a lot of importance to uh, higher ctr uh, to establish the quality score of the keywords and the quality score of ads so uh, that's why if the ctr is higher if the uh, page experience is higher then uh, people are ranked uh, then the ad, then your ads are ranked higher right so if we take the same thing into consideration and think about organic search rankings then the thing remains the same right so uh, of course um, uh, ctr is important for organic search rankings as well um, so if somebody clicks on this particular link reads there is um, reads it Uh, does not bounce off immediately, and uh, is uh, um, the on-page time is uh, considerably uh, good. I mean, it's reasonably good. Then um, Google will definitely mark this uh, particular search ranking as uh, this particular search uh, result as relevant for this particular keyword, and eventually, the uh, it will uh, help in uh, improving the search rankings for this particular search result. Right. So that's how it. it would help now uh, the second thing uh, that uh, must be worried about is um, author rank so uh, once again it's uh, not really an established metric but people are speculating that it is one of the very important ranking signals that google uses uh, in its algorithm in its new algorithm so google uh, is supposedly uh, ranking articles based on author's credibility also so this author's credibility it would be a function of uh, so of general social traction that his or her post received the frequency of posting and the quality of participation which means that uh, uh, it was when we talk about social traction then it should be social traction from influential users also influential google plus users also right so how frequently is the person posting what is the quality of content that he posts he or she posts or and what is the kind of social traction that is your post received that would determine author's credibility and ultimately author rank so uh, another thing is that there would be a correlation between the domain authority of a website and the author rank so let me explain this to you using an example for instance i am an author right i write for a uh, high domain authority website like mashable so uh, some authority some uh, Uh, good uh, um, authority from that particular high domain uh, authority website is passed along to me as an author, right? Now, if I write for websites like Lead Squad, then this uh, then this passes credibility to um, Lead Squad Lead Squad's website as well, right? So this is how it works. If an author is uh, publishing on high domain authority websites, then uh, the other websites that he or she is blogging for. Would get um, would get uh, good credibility as well, right? So that's why the author rank is important. Now the third uh, uh, thing why uh, it is important uh, uh, to have this is image search attribution. Now this is uh, an image uh, search result, right? As you can see that uh, the uh, image has been attributed to the author here, along with the link to the website as well. So uh, this also helps. So in search rankings also the author is getting credited for uh, the image, right? So uh, that is important. Then uh, once again, posts with authorship reportedly give uh, higher click-through rates. I have said this thing before. Let's just look at this number uh, to uh, you know support what I have said before. So a study by a search marketing uh, firm called Catalyst saw 150 percent improvement in CTR after establishing authorship. So to quote the personal example, we actually also saw this for uh, one of our uh, for one of our uh, um, clients. So uh, what happened was um, that after we established their official markup and their professional markup, their uh, uh, website uh, not only uh, their blog post not only started ranking higher in the search results, but uh, the uh, click rates, the click through rates also. Okay. 
options actually. So uh, when you have the first option is when you have an email ID on the same domain as your website blog, like um, Mino at eSquare.com. Right. The second option is when you don't have an email ID on the same domain as your website blog or blog. So let's um, talk about the first one, which means using a verified email ID. So the first thing to do is create a Google Plus profile if you don't already have one using that particular email ID. It's just me at eSquare.com. Then go to Google Authorship page. Let, let me show you how to do it online. So this is the link that you would want to go to slash authorship. Right? Paste your uh, email ID here. Click on sign up for authorship. Google would send you an email. Right? Google would uh, send you an email and uh, with a link and you have to click on that link and your uh, authorship will be verified will be established. Right. so it's pretty simple when uh, if you have uh, uh, an email id on the same domain as your website right the second option which means uh, linking your content your uh, uh, second option where uh, you know when your uh, email id is on not on the same same domain so the first thing that you have to do is you have to link uh, your content to your Google Plus profile, which means you have to link uh, uh, your content from your website to your Google Plus profile. Let, let me show you how to do it on WordPress. Log into your WordPress dashboard, click on Users section, edit the profile of the user whose authorship you wish to, wish to establish, add the Google Plus profile link of the author and search in the section given. So let me show you how you can do it on WordPress. I'll quickly show it to you. So what I'll do is I'll log in. Let me get my right then I have to click on edit for whoever is the author that I want to uh, establish the authorship for place the Google Plus profile you are here see it's already there so that's why I'll not uh, do it again and up click on update profile so one part is done one half of the job is done you've already you've linked your uh, website content to your Google Plus profile so this is for uh, uh, websites that are on WordPress. Now, if your website is on non-WordPress, uh, non, uh, it's not on WordPress. What are you supposed to do then? So uh, first thing, once again, first step would be to link your website to Google Plus. So for single author websites, this is what you're supposed to do. You have to take this particular piece of code and you have to place it within the head section of your website's page template. You can ask your uh, webmaster to do it if you do not have the technical uh, expertise right so uh, all that you have to change here is the url the google plus uh, profile url author profile url right so if your author if your website is a multiple author website which means that you have uh, many people writing for your uh, blog right and with no about section so here what you're supposed to do is on each posted article you need to include a link by line naming the author so right this is the code that you have to paste on the bottom of uh, top or bottom of the article text this is the thing that you have to put there right so it's pretty basic uh, so you will need to do it on each post article or you can also do it within your site template right so then you will have to do it only once but uh, when you are uh, doing it uh, at this level, when you are doing it manually, uh, you, when you are wrong, uh, then, then it will be pretty simple. Then what, what if uh, you have a multiple author website with about section for individual authors? So you have to do, do two steps here. You have to put the following on each article by the author, right? So uh, this code is there. As you can see, this particular link is not for the Google uh, Plus profile of the author, 
uh, it's for the about page of uh, the author on your own website right so you have to put this on each article by the author and uh, uh, from the about page of the author you have to uh, add this particular code which links to the google plus profile of the author right so when you are uh, done with these two steps uh, then uh, it will be established your authorship for the multiple author website will be established from different web sections so the second step now all of these steps were for uh, uh, linking your uh, google plus profile to the content from your website right the author's content from the website now uh, you have to give a reciprocal link from the google plus profile to your website so i'll uh, i'll tell you how to do that once again so uh, here you are on the author's individual profile right you are on the about section click on about and come here so just scroll down and you can see there are different things here people story education information then you can see an option called uh, links here so what you have to do is you have to click on edit you have to um, um go to the contributed to section add a custom link as you can see that uh, my website where i contribute which is the squared is already uh, linked here right so uh, here my authorship is perfectly established so you have to add the custom link there and hit save and your authorship will be established within uh, uh, it will take almost uh, a week to uh, take effect and after one week your posts um, will start appearing with rich snippets with the author bylines and in search results right so uh, if you want to uh, check um, uh, how check whether uh, the authorship and the publisher markup is established or not for your website and for your authors you can uh, go to google's structured data testing tool That's it. Uh, your um, authorship and your publisher markup. You know how to establish them now, and uh, you uh, understand now why it is important for uh, you to have both a Google Plus business page as well as some individual Google Plus profiles for your authors and uh, people who manage your uh, social presence, online presence. Your business is online presence, right? So let's come to the next part of it, which is uh, Google Plus and SEO. Let's once again look at uh, some data here. So these statistics were uh, released by Comscore on uh, user activity on Google Local over the last six months. So what what does this um, statistics say? So one thing is that uh, we found out that 73% of all online activity is related to local content, which means that people are looking for something uh, local when they are doing searches on Google. Then 82% uh, of online searches follow up with a visit. One percent of local searches result in purchase. So this means that uh, uh, local um, local is gaining local local searches are gaining a lot of importance. So you have to make sure that you are your presence is there on local, right? So you have to work on your local SEO. So I'll um, see. Uh, search rankings uh, with rich snippets look better. right definitely look better and these rich snippets are established if local businesses have properly set up local business page with reviews etc this uh, step is particularly important to you if you are a local business and uh, you uh, want to be found uh, by people whoever is searching for you online right so uh, see this is uh, a local this is how a local uh, search result appears 
right along with the, the map the reviews different reviews the uh, address the phone number it's like everything is there so uh, the user the searcher can uh, uh, make a call uh, to these uh, people or then visit these people directly right so it helps another thing is that it helps local businesses compete with bigger retailers for instance um, i search for gold jewelry on google right so just below the sponsored links right with by mintra and other um, retailers you can see these organic search rankings for local uh, results like local stores they show up just below the sponsored ones right so this is uh, some pretty good advantage that we have the, this is not even sponsored this is uh, organic search right so uh, you're not really paying any money for it all that you have to make sure is that your uh, google places account or your uh, google local page is set up properly and these rankings um, these um, search rankings uh, search results could be pulled directly from there right so as you can see there are reviews etc there then the address then the phone number right so if you are one of these businesses and if you have uh, your google plus uh, uh, local page well established um, google plus page and all the information there then uh, you can reap the benefits of this right then once again user and customer reviews also help which uh, people will be posting to either your uh, google plus local page or your google places account whichever one you have now actually what google is doing is uh, that it's uh, upgrading all the google places accounts to google local page have to be on a lookout for that if your page hasn't been updated yet. So what should the businesses do? Be locally visible, right, if you are a local business. Have a local business uh, Google page, local, Google local page. Ask your satisfied customers to write reviews for you on Google Places or your Google local. Then uh, stick to your places or Google plus local quality guidelines. There are a number of uh, quality guidelines that uh, Google uh, specifies, so you have to adhere to them. If you don't want to lose rank, or if you don't want your uh, uh, business uh, to have a negative uh, uh, impression on you, now uh, let's talk about your normal international, or as you some people call it, international SEO. So the first thing is that uh, authorship makes links look clickable. So higher CTR sends positive signals to Google, and Google rank the con ranks the content higher. So. This thing we have uh, discussed before. This uh, uh, this is relevant for SEO part of it as well. This is especially relevant when uh, your users, the searchers, are logged into their Google accounts. So um, then, um, if they have visited you previously, then uh, Google would rank uh, uh, your uh, results higher than the other results which are similar to that particular key phrase that they're looking for, right? Then uh, once again, authorship also establishes credibility and helps rank better, right? Then uh, the link juice thing that we spoke about before, that the links that are shared on Google Plus are do follow and not no, no follow like uh, uh, the links on other social networks, right? So um, see, this is uh, a screenshot uh, from uh, my Google Plus, my uh, my business's Google Plus page. Right, this is my feed here. I have uh, posted uh, a status, as you can see. Right, I have posted a link to my website here, uh, and all of these links that are marked in green are do follow links. Right, so uh, if you are wondering how I got the, uh, how I uh, got this green thing to appear, I am using uh, Moz Bar. You can also download it. You'll be able to do a lot of uh, cool things uh, uh, using it. So this is one of the things. Um, you you can find out which all links are do follow on a particular page by using this mouse bar. So as you can see, this particular link to my website is do follow, right? Now let's compare this to links on Facebook. This is the link to my website. This is the link to my website. They are not, they are do follow, right? Only the links which are within Facebook are do follow. So it does. So Facebook does not pass any kind of link authority from Facebook to uh, my website each quiet right but google on the other hand passes its authority to my website as well so uh, this is a very very uh, important thing and this can really help you right so another 
thing is that each post in Google Plus has its own URL before it acts as an individual blog post itself. Uh, this thing is not there in any of the other uh, social networking sites or any of, on, of the other uh, channels, right? So all the on-page SEO factors like keywords etc. play a role when something like this happens, right? So take a look at this particular post of mine. The URL is unique, right? So if um, if I optimize this post properly and have um, quality content there, then a lot of Google Plus users, uh, influential Google Plus users can interact with my content here, right? And uh, thus making this particular post rank higher than the others in the same category, right? So it works like a blog post itself. Then once again, uh, uh, Google Plus hashtags also get ranked in search results, right? So as you can see, hashtag see this is an this is a hashtag. This is a hashtag right? So uh, these get ranked in search results. So once again, if uh, influential Google Plus users are sharing your content or interacting with your content, you would get much better SEO benefits than you otherwise would have. Then uh, once again, the content that you share on Google Plus is indexed immediately as uh, opposed to uh, the content shared on other microblogging uh, sites, uh, sites like uh, Twitter, Facebook, etc. Right. So this is how uh, it is important for SEO. Now uh, let's talk about Google Plus's impact on ads. So those of you who run a lot of uh, Google ads would know that there is uh, something called social extensions in Google AdWords, right? So there is something new that has come up, which is called shared endorsements, uh, which it is an extension of um, your um, uh, social extensions itself, right? So how would it work? Um, it would work something like this, something like uh, Facebook's uh, sponsored stories. It would be word of mouth ads. You know, if uh, somebody searches uh, for something, then uh, somebody searches for an Italian restaurant, right? Then in this, uh, in the uh, so if somebody somebody in uh, in their circles have reviewed a particular restaurant in that particular area then they would be able to see uh, the listing for that particular business along with the review from their friend and the rating from their friend right along with the uh, uh, headshot of their uh, uh, friend's profile friend's photo so of course because it is uh, a word of mouth thing it is like a recommendation then uh, it definitely would uh, have a better trust factor than uh, otherwise it would have, right? So uh, this is how it would help. So uh, right. So the rich snippets that show up in local organic search rankings, they would appear in ads as well. The, uh, this update was made in 11, on uh, 11th November. And also, if uh, some people are not really happy with the thing, you know. So th those users, they can control whether or not their faces show up in the ads. They can opt out from it, right? So this is how it will help. So uh, coming to the next uh, next part of it, the last part of the webinar, which is uh, uh, the best practices of uh, having a profile on Google Plus or being on Google Plus, engaging with people on Google Plus. So let's talk about the best practices. So uh, one thing, yeah, complete your profile. Both your uh, business and your individual profiles have the story, profile picture, cover pic, all the different links, which means your website link, your contributor link, etc. You should have your contact details there as well, along with the phone number, right? Don't stuff your profile with keywords. Uh, for instance, don't write best travel agency in the area you need to name. Google would uh, ultimately. Uh, you know, find out that you are trying to trick it and uh, would penalize you if it does, if it finds out. Then you have to make use of circles. You can create different kinds of circles like work, friends, digital marketing, etc. and share specific updates with only specific circles. You know, your work related stuff might not be of uh, uh, relevance to your family or your friends. So you can uh, uh, avoid sending uh, irrelevant stuff to people who don't really want to see that particular kind of stuff, right? So we have to make use of circles. Different kinds of circles can be there. Then uh, you have to, uh, these are certain dimensions that are there. The 
cover photo dimensions are uh, 2120 into 1192 pixels file which is 270 to 270 pixels and you should make sure that you have a good profile picture it uh, it helps it might sound rudimentary but it helps because uh, um, from Chris Shepard uh, he saw a 35% increase in CTR with a better picture so experiment with your different pictures also your the CTR might increase if that happens then uh, once again don't post stuff only about your product post about stuff that would interest people you know your target audience so for instance if you are a travel agency 80% of your postings could be about um, uh, something interesting like pictures for plus uh, photo blog posts or favorite holiday destinations right only about 20% should be directly uh, promotional then uh, one thing that you have to uh, one another thing that you can do is stick to the 4 is to 1 is to 1 rule which means that 4 non salesy interesting things like interesting blog posts or uh, uh, interesting uh, stuff from uh, different sources right not just your own website and one soft promotion which can be in the form of an maybe an ebook download or uh, 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 a test paper download if you are an education company and then one can be your hard promotion which means some 10 percent discount on buying something now right so you can stick to this rule then uh, you have to you can join communities and contribute me meaningfully there are already a number of communities that are there uh, on uh, google plus right uh, so uh, pick the pick, pick the communities that are relevant to your business and join them and uh, contribute meaningfully. Then you can even create communities and invite people to talk about health and stuff. So once again, you have to make sure that uh, you don't just post stuff about yourself. You have to try to um, put, give some uh, value to the people that would increase the credibility for your business. Then. Uh, also, it, you must make it very easy for people to share your stuff on Google Plus. So have uh, Google Plus one buttons on your blog, right? So that would make it easier for people to share your stuff, right? So that's it. These are the best practices, the very basic ones. Uh, then here's uh, a cheat. Uh, if people, uh, if uh, you are already on Google Plus, then you would know that uh, posting on Google Plus is a little different uh, from posting on uh, other. Uh, social networking sites like Facebook and uh, Twitter, right? So you can format how your post looks like in Google Plus. So um, you can, you should make use of the options available. If you want italic text, then in front of your uh, text and at the end of your text, you have to add uh, an underscore, right? To bold the text, you have to put uh, asterisk signs. You have to put your text within the asterisk signs. Then um, for italic and bold, you have to give asterisk and uh, underscore, right? And for strike through, um, strike through text, you have to put hyphens, right? Again, at the beginning and at the end. So you can uh, do a lot of form formatting to uh, control how your post will look like. So your post will look better, more readable, right? So uh, let's look at the checklist based on what we discussed today, right? So, um, first thing that you have to do is create, create a Google Plus profile, create a Google Plus business page, verify your page, which means link to your website, then enable social extensions within AdWords, claim your custom URL, both for profile and page. This actually I did not uh, really discuss too much in detail. What Google has allowed um, some profiles to do is uh, to have their own personal uh, URL. So it applies to both profiles as well as business pages, right? So uh, you can choose this particular option. Google would also notify you uh, when you are eligible for it. Then uh, you should assign page managers. You should add uh, the Google Plus badge to your site. You should establish authorship for all your authors. You should establish the publisher markup. You should complete uh, both your profiles, um, uh, your business profile as well as your education profile, with cover image, profile picture, etc. You should uh, circle people, you should create circles, make use of those circles, and you should join and contribute to communities meaningfully, right? So uh, this was uh, uh, the, this, with, with this I've come to the end of the webinar, uh, and um, so thank you all for uh, attending. We'll be sending you the PPT as well as the
recording and uh, the blog posts uh, for uh, all the different queries that came in uh, in within four business days. Thank you all for attending.